We contacted boroughs from Tower Hamlets up to Hartford with this vision to revitalise the fruit growing history of the Lee Valley. We asked for a plot of land and it was the, the borough of Waltham Forest that said, hey, we've got some pockets of land up in Chingford, derelict allotments, take them and see what you can do with them. That's how it began. We saw 60 birds ID'd in total. The collared dove, a pied wagtail, a jackdaw, a wren, and actually two species of woodpecker, the great spotted and green, both seen. The wood pigeon. Yes! <laughs> A lot of cameras around today. Elena, tell us what's going on. Hi. Dan here, he's behind one of the cameras, and Hilary, who's carrying the other one. We've got a new project on the go, the new banknotes that they're going to be producing. And they've invited Organic Lee um, to be one of the, um, the sort of names on the banknotes. You know, like, you know, on the £10 note, you get Jane Austen or whatever, but on the green back, you're going to get one of them with Organic Lee. So we have the option to have our photographs taken to go on that banknote. I'm a member of Organic Lee Co-op and you're at Hawkwood, our 12-acre 12, 12 market garden site. We're a workers' co-op, focusing on food growing with the idea of changing the food system locally. It needs changing and so we're going to try and do our bit for it. The first soil was turned in Organic Lee's name in February 2001. That's when the project began on a patch of ground that feels like the size of a postage stamp compared to where we are now and where we are here today. It was surrounded by open forest, so this is on the kind of eastern edge of the site. It's got horticultural areas, including some orchard, some vineyard, the glass houses and the warehouse, and some amazing huge trees. And this is council land. The council ran a plant nursery here, and they were looking for another use for it. And we put a proposal to them that we would take it on as community by garden and plant nursery. Eventually, they agreed to give us a go. We seemed to be successful, and we've been here ever since. So you've got garlic planted here, just come through January. Things are starting to grow and all this staging will soon be covered in seedlings which will be going into the ground here, later or on the rest of the site. We were pretty certain that we could create it into a resource, a resource that is about food growing, a resource that's also about bringing people together, a resource that's also about reimagining what our cities can be when people connect and when people work together doing something meaningful and something productive. And this site has definitely held that vision and supported that vision. This land definitely does that. What you see here is our veg box scheme. Every week we are packing and delivering about a thousand bags of fruit and veg. Some of which we grow here, but most of it comes from other farmers that we work with as close as possible. So that is within South East England, wider UK, but also obviously some things need to come from Europe. So it has to be organic, has to be as local as possible. The main thing is to actually support local farmers, supply into a market where there's a demand for it. I've been working in sustainable food systems for about 10 years. So I work with the distribution team. And yeah. we, we do the box pack. So it's quite a logistical undertaking. There's a, a team of us who work together to make it as smooth as possible. Everyone gets paid the same hourly rate. There's about 24 members of the co-op at the moment. Maybe another 10 or so other people that work for us on sessional work and occasional work. So it's 30 plus staff. It's not just growing fruit and veg and supplying it, it's about training people in horticulture, supporting people to set up their own organisations and co-ops and things like that. So it's a sort of, it's quite a wide remit of things that we do. This is our classroom. We're an accredited training centre. So that's a large part of what we do is to try and encourage other people to grow food. You look beyond my head like you're looking at a bird. I've been coming for just over a year, started off volunteering once a week and I did the level one course and the level two at general horticulture. Yeah and then going to start the apprenticeship soon, so going up the stages. It's gorgeous, hang on. I did a level one last year, I did well, and now I'm looking forward for the level two that I'm going to start at the end of March. I've done everything in Awkward. I've done gardening, now in the box pack. I helped Gary down the cellar terrace, build a bed. I've done everything. I've done uh, level one, level two gardening as well. In order to to fix the puncture, we need to get the wheel off. I volunteered by mechanic. I volunteered at the Hawkwood bike space. Here we go. Fix the bikes of the volunteers and workers. We fix the bikes while they're out there, like 
working in the field, so when they're ready to go, we have it fixed for them. There's plenty of existing members of the co-op who started off as a volunteer. First I soaked in apple cider vinegar, then I added some fennel. I grew up in the area, I grew up in Wolfram Forest. I started here as a youth worker, that grew into a growth facilitator slash an outreach worker. But I've also got skills in chefing, mental health. I just love to grow, innit? So that kind of played into what I was becoming. Food's pretty important to everyone and it was just great to find a bunch of people who wanted to try and do something, feed off each other and develop plans and ideas and actually then get on and do them because there was a bunch of us. I think that's part of the reason behind our success is that we've always included other people and it just enables things to develop. Sorry, I've got to get this smutty grin off my face. <laughs> Sorry. Been involved in the social movement side of it, trying to get the legislation on board. Lovely. Yeah, I've been involved in like proper uh, full-on uh, eco camps and that was really exciting. In the time since Organically was founded, the issue around where your food comes from, what you're eating, how it's produced, there's so much more awareness of that being a part of a cultural shift and a movement, which is wonderful to be part of, it's something that feels it's growing, you know. At the same time, of course, global capitalism and that the food supply inherent in that has been continuing to grab land in, in the majority world to wipe out peasant agriculture and to hasten more industrial agriculture. So we've seen a growth of consciousness and movement on one hand and still the steamroll of capitalism going at the same time. This is our little corner of the earth which we're trying to, trying to save. Um, but, you know, it's an uphill struggle. Actually, I'm very much worried about the climate crisis. I don't think the world is going in a good direction. It's like we need to hold the responsible the people in the positions of power who actually can make decisions which affect the others. I mean, you can't stand where, where we're standing now and not feel a sense of panic if you think about the, the big climatic crisis. I think what matters is also being part of the solution. And my hope lies in every new person, and we're blessed with people that constantly come through that gate, that constantly say, this is what I was looking for, this is what I believe in. And we are actually at the forefront of a lot of change. You can't really belittle any small thing that you're doing to make that change. This place alone, yeah, for me, it just shows if, if you can, do. The only way is for people to work together and figure out what they can do, I suppose as individuals, but really in small groups and then maybe slightly larger groups, then you kind of get that ripple effect and that kind of like amalgamation of effort that all adds up to hopefully something that is enough to get us out of it. There are ways to do this, so why wouldn't we just go and do it? There are obstacles, but we know what they are and they just need to be dealt with. So it's about people, but it's also about changing the way that land is owned the way that land is occupied, and then the way in which land is respected and worked. This seems to encompass the spirit of what for us is like the multicultural, the diversity, the natural vibe. It's almost like a new way to, to live in a sense. Yeah, that's pretty epic. It was a really nice place to be, you know. There was like a really like an enclave of just this peace, and I thought that this place is like a utopia <laughs> for me. Wow. What do you like about coming here to do this peacefulness? sense community. Especially the way people ask me how I am. <laughs> Is there really me in city? I'm a full-time carer. I get some time off in the mornings, so I come down here. It's a good change of environment. Yeah, I bet it is. Yeah, yeah, it's lovely. I just like being here. Do you know, it's like walking in paradise. Being here around these people gives me some kind of hope. I see that not everybody is just thinking about money, thinking about career, but people are also just thinking about community. So it gives me hope for sure yeah. to be here. Well, thank you so much for talking to us. Yeah, you give great. us hope too. Yeah. yeah. What I really value about the Power Project and the work that you're doing is bringing people together to feel their own power. Yeah, forget the power of politics and, and the power of the sun, to bring people together to feel their own power. I think what does that more than ever is when people see the links between ideas and the links between issues. For me, what's really exciting about the project you have on the streets is you're linking what's happening at street level with energy to what's happening here in terms of community-based food production. For me, that's, 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 that's a powerful force for change. We want to see real people doing real things in real communities being celebrated. Now we're trying to make the leap to raise a million pounds. Uh, so £500,000 divided into some local causes and the grassroots Green New Deal and the other half to go into creating a power station on our streets. What we're arguing through this film is, is that if we as artists and communities can create our own Green New Deal then why isn't the government doing this everywhere across Britain, across Europe and across America and beyond? That's our question. 
Today we've been up at Organic Leeds. It's the first time I've ever visited. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's been really moving. I, like, I never expected it to be so... What's the word for it? Like, the scale of it. It's really like, wow, it's massive. And it's so inspiring, isn't it? Yeah, obviously the connection with the earth and with each other, and it's even described as a utopia where like you find your place. You can see why people come and stay and come back here. Yeah, a different way. And it's lovely the it's cooperative nature, like the non hierarchical nature. It just feels like I feel like we're in the right place in a weird way. Just a quick shout out to new members who have joined us on a paid tier this week. Uh, so we have Fred Houch. I hope that's the right pronunciation, Fred. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, sorry that there was an issue with your billing and, and thanks for joining again. Uh, Donna Holt, uh, thank you for joining. Judith Jenkins, many thanks for joining. Matt Kaleda from Our Street, thank you for joining. Co Connell, Connell Morrison, thank you so much for joining. Uh, Catherine Selwyn, thanks for joining. Uh, Rachel Taylor, Sue Wright and Stephen Simpson. Thank you guys so, so much for joining and uh, welcome to the Power Membership. We will be getting your greenbacks out to you if you're on the relevant tiers for those right now. And uh, I hope you have a really lovely week and uh, we'll be probably putting another YouTube up in the middle of the week. We are counting down towards our deadline for raising £100,000 worth of funds. So far we've sold about £10,000 worth. So we've got a huge mountain to go, but we have a special idea which uh, we're going to put implement next week. So hopefully that will start to chip away at that massive number. So uh, again, thanks for joining and we'll see you really soon. Cheers. Bye.